Hello, and in this video I'm going to go through the full solution of the square interferometer that we did last time in class. So this is the interferometer that we were discussing in class last time. Light comes out of the laser, and half of the beam is reflected up to this just standard mirror, then travels along the distance x, where it hits a second mirror and is reflected towards the detector. Meanwhile, the second part of the beam goes straight through the beam splitter, reflects off the second beam splitter, and goes into the detector. So we have two different paths, the long dashes and the short dashes, and these two paths will interfere at the detector. Our goal is to determine what is the longest wavelength that will yield destructive and also the longest wavelength that will yield constructive. Finally, we will talk about the fact of is there a shortest wavelength that yields constructive or destructive interference. So we will begin with the longest wavelength that yields destructive interference, which I will work out in blue. As for everything else in this unit, we will begin by considering the difference in optical path length. And we'll define L1 to be the long path and L2 to be the short path. So for L1, how far does the light travel in terms of its wavelength? Well, we don't know the distance from the laser to the beam splitter, so I'm just going to call it A. Similarly, we don't know the distance from the beam splitter to the detector, so we'll call that B. How far does the light travel for path L1? Well, it travels A over the wavelength plus Y over the wavelength plus X over the wavelength plus y again over the wavelength plus b over the wavelength which when i simplify it comes down to a over lambda plus 2y over lambda plus x over lambda plus b over lambda now let's think about our second path l2 l2 travels a over lambda from the laser to the first beam splitter, x over lambda, and then b over lambda from the second beam splitter to the detector. The difference in path length, we just subtract these two. So we have a over lambda plus 2y over lambda plus x over lambda plus b over lambda minus a over lambda x over lambda, b over lambda. Our a's subtract to zero, our b's subtract to zero, and so do our x's, leaving me with a difference in optical path length of just 2y over lambda. Now, looking at this expression, we see that as delta goes down, as the difference in optical path length decreases, the wavelength goes up, assuming y is fixed. Now we want the longest wavelength, which means we want the shortest delta that yields destructive interference. And the smallest delta that yields destructive interference is one half. Three halves is also destructive, but we're looking for the smallest one. So since the smallest delta for destructive interference is one half, we know that one half being 2y over lambda, or lambda being 4y, this will be the longest wavelength that yields destructive interference. Is there a shortest wavelength that yields destructive interference? No, there is not. Because delta 3 halves would also be destructive, as would 5 halves, 
as would be 1023.5. Each one of these deltas would correspond to a wavelength that yields destructive interference for this interferometer. And as delta increases, the lambda would drop, as we have seen here. Therefore, there is no shortest wavelength. There's an infinite number of wavelengths that yield destructive interference. Lambda equals 4y is just the longest possible one. So now we move on to constructive interference. Well, the path lengths are still the same. We haven't changed anything with regards to any of the geometry. So the difference in path length is still going to be 2y over lambda. Now we need to think about what is the smallest delta that yields constructive interference. Well, there's kind of two options. A delta equals 0, that's an integer. There's also a delta equals 1. So which of these should we choose? Well, here we have to think about the physical situation of the problem. Delta equals 0 implies that 0 is 2y over lambda, which implies that either lambda is infinity or y equals 0. And lambda equals infinity is clearly nonsense, and so is y equals 0. y equals 0 means taking the distance y and shrinking it to 0. That's not an interferometer anymore. That's just a beam traveling in a straight line. So we don't choose 0. We instead choose delta equals 1. So that means we have 1 being 2y over lambda, which means lambda being 2y is the longest wavelength that will yield constructive interference. And just like for destructive, there is no shortest wavelength that yields constructive interference. Delta 2, delta 3, delta 4, these would all correspond to wavelengths of constructive interference. But the wavelengths get shorter and shorter and shorter. So there is no shortest, but there is a longest. This concludes this video.